Hey everybody, Joe here. Um, I want to do a quick video, and I say quick and it never works that way, but um, I want to do a video kind of my, I guess it would be closer to seven month, but six month uh, beard noob video. Things I've learned, tip tricks, um, things if you're thinking about growing a beard, letting it grow out, um, things to avoid, things to do. Um, uh, what products to use that I found work great, what not to use, uh, techniques I found that work, what doesn't, um, and totally from the aspect of someone who has grown their first beard. Um, I decided, uh, I turned 40 in January, I decided I wanted to start growing a beard for my 40th, you know, year 40. Um, so I started in November just letting it go. Now, I've had beards in the past that were always a few weeks old um you know at most three weeks not that five o'clock shadow but nothing that needed grooming i could always just towel off my face and that was fine um never anything past a month certainly not anything to this extent um so it's uh i just wanted to kind of share some of what I've learned along the way in case you're thinking about doing it. And maybe you're not 40, maybe you're younger and thinking about doing it. Maybe you're older and thinking about doing it. But either way, um, I'm not a, you know, there's a lot of these great beard videos and guys who do these uh, great um, videos all about beards. And these are guys that have years and years of experience. Um, so I wanted to share, I'm a total noob, I've never had a beard. So I just kind of wanted to share how it's gone for me and what I think might help you guys. So first and foremost, you know, the thing that everyone talks about is that awkward phase. Um, I can't remember exactly how far in I was before I got to that awkward phase where it just doesn't do anything you want. Um, and it looks funky and weird and it doesn't lay and it doesn't groom. You just can't do anything with it. And I do remember thinking, F this. I'm just going to shave it off. I just want to do this. But someone gave me the idea and they said, you know, you could basically groom your way through the awkward phase. Um, go into a barber, have them fade in the sides with my haircut um, and shape it a little bit. Now, it's going to extend the amount of time that you that I'm going to get my full growth you know, instead of being just six months of hard growth and then grooming, um, you extend that time a little bit, but you get through that month or so of that awkward phase with a fairly nice groomed beard, uh, you know, faded, side faded into your haircut, things like that. It just, it helped. It helped a lot. Um, so I would highly, highly recommend that. Um, instead of <laughs> suffering through that awkward phase, um, just kind of groom your way through it. And like I said, it, you have to, you extend out the amount of time before you get real good growth, but it doesn't look weird and funky in that meantime, especially if, it, if you have a job where you have to be in front of people in a somewhat, you know, business casual or a business environment. Um, it kind of gets you through that weird phase without looking bad, I guess, if you will. So that would be kind of my first thing is you can kind of groom your way through it. Um, it, it just takes a little bit longer to get full growth, but I thought it was the better road to go versus just doing the hard six to eight months of growth and then cutting it all back. So that's what I chose to do. Um, and it worked out for me. So, um, a few things you'll need definitely early on, um, beard oil. And that's not so much for the hair, but it's for the skin. Um, I don't, I didn't have too much an issue with uh, itchiness and stuff like that, but some people might. So you definitely want a good uh, beard oil. And you're just going to use um, just a few drops. You know, it's, if you can see this, and I'll show you. So you can see it's, it's really, really oily and it definitely a little goes a long way. I mean, that's just three drops and my hands are totally coated in this stuff. Um, so I found that usually five or six drops is enough to work into the skin. Um, I still use it actually a few nights a week, um, mostly after I have washed my beard. 
um, just to help replace some of the oils in the skin and the hair. Um, so secondly, uh, once your beard does get long enough, you do want to use a beard wash, um, something specific, a specific beard wash. I'm not going to show brands and things like that only because, you know, I, I don't want to push one brand over another. Um, I'm just trying these out. They, they might not even be the best products for what I've got going, but it's just what I have at the moment and it's what I'm using. I'll try something else later. Um, so yeah, use a real beard wash. Don't use your hair shampoo and your hair conditioner. I did that early on, kind of like, what's the big deal? It, it kind of is a big deal. Um, the hair in your face and the hair in your head behave totally different and they react differently to those uh, shampoos and conditioners. So definitely use a, a, a beard wash. Um, and after you wash, uh, definitely use a little bit of the, you know, little beard or hair oil and work it in. And then, uh, then at night, I like to put in a beard balm. Um, and you can see what that looks like. And this stuff, it's, <laughs> it's, it's funny. And one thing to remember throughout this video, with everything, a little goes a long way. And a lot is too much. Um, it, I learned that early on. I w I've always been a, well, more is better type person. And with all this kind of stuff, less is definitely way more. Um, I'm just going to kind of get out there. This much. That's all there is. It's not that much. But once you warm this stuff up, it... I, I don't know if you can see how shiny my hands are. But it the, it's like, it's just a waxy, oily, thick coating. It, it's almost like... If you're in engines and cars, it's like putting your hands in warm 2050 or warm uh, straight 50 weight oil. It is thick. Um, and once it gets in your hair and you, you, you really want to work it in, get it, get it in there, up and down, get it in. Um, it doesn't really have any styling properties. And that's not really what it's for. I would say as far as styling goes, it's a light hold product. Um, it's not going to keep your beard from going every which way in the wind and all that. It's mainly, it's just for moisturizing the hair. Um, and, and like I said, you put that, you put it in and your beard for about 10 minutes is very sticky. It's very oily, but it soaks into the hair like a sponge. So I do it at night. I go to the gym at night. I shower. If I wash my beard, I will uh, put in some hair oil and then put in some uh, balm. And by the time I'm ready for bed, my beard is dry, but the hair is very, uh, it's very soft. It feels nice. It's not crunch, you know, crusty, crunchy, wiry. It's just very soft. You, you know, I can do this. I can feel the hair kind of, you know, brushing in the wind and moving around like a little broom. Um, and it just feels good to run the hands through. It's just, it feels so nice and it's dry. You don't have any residue on your hands because it's all been soaked into the hair. So, um, and I put that on at night. And then when I wake up in the morning, you know, 90% of the time I'd say, um, it, it makes grooming just way easier. And you will find that like your hair, if you know, if you have a lot of hair, you have good beard days and you have bad beard days. Um, but using oil balms at night, um, it definitely ups your chances of having a good beard day the next day um, and having it not be a nightmare to groom. So, um, so as far as grooming goes, um, I've kind of tried out a lot of things. Now, when your beard is very short, um, you know, the best thing for it is just one of these boar's hair, uh, boar bristle brushes. Uh, and I still use even now um, with my beard being longer. And, you know, throughout the day, you know, maybe, um, especially on the weekend like this, if we're going to go out and I've been home doing stuff, I might just kind of lightly brush it through my beard just to kind of get some of the, the hairs that have kind of come out of place and just kind of get things brushed, get some shape back into it. Um, and that's it. Um, but when, when your beard is shorter, this will definitely help you know, brush, you know, start getting the direction of the growth, brush everything into, per, uh, into place. Um, and it just helps with grooming. And also it helps exfoliate, gets the dead skin cells out. 
uh, get off your face, um, helps with the hair growth by stimulating the follicles. Um, so definitely something to use. Uh, another thing is wooden comb and the same thing. Um, I keep this in my truck with me during the day, especially with mask wearing being, th being a thing. Um, if I have to go anywhere and wear a mask, uh, it just crushes my beard. So I'm usually, uh, as soon as I leave and I can take my mask off, I'm out there kind of brushing my beard up and then back down again and trying to straighten it out as best I can. Um, so a wooden comb is beneficial because you don't want, uh, number one, the static from a plastic comb. And number two, with the, the teeth on these being very fine and rounded and smooth, um, they're not going to catch the hairs, pull hairs, create split ends, things like that. Um, because you will learn that with a beard, your biggest enemy is flyaways. And by flyaways, that's the hairs that kind of want to go, whoop, and just kind of go off into nowhere. Um, so this will definitely help with those in the sense that you're not creating split ends. You're not creating a situation where the hairs are going to want to act erratically. Um, so a good wooden comb for sure. Um, now on the, uh, on the topic of flyaways or hairs that just kind of stick out every which way, um, you know, you, you can have your grooming scissors. I use these as little as possible. I, I try not to. And someone had told me that basically, look, you might clip away a few little, you know, random hairs that are sticking out, but they're sticking out because you slept on them funny. And after a day or two of just combing, things go back to normal. Now you start clipping hairs here and then clipping a couple here and a couple there. And you start doing that every day and being hyper, hyper anal about your beard and your grooming and stray hairs. You're going to, you potentially going to start cutting um, good hairs away and really hurting your beard growth. Um, you might end up with, you know, holes in your beard or areas where it's growing weird or funky or something like that. So I try to use uh, grooming scissors as little as possible. Um, so shaving. Um, you know, I, before I had a beard, I always shaved with a Japanese feather straight razor. Um, and I still use this. Um, and where I use this, of course, is on the neck and then on the cheeks. So this does come into play. I still use this quite a bit. Um, probably two times a week, I'll give myself a good close shave. Um, and some mornings I just need to just quickly throw a shave together. So I'll just use a set of uh, trimmers and then I will follow that up with, what's that? I'll follow that up with a foil um, just to get a little bit closer after hitting it with the clippers. So, and that's for, like I said, for my neck, you can get up on the cheeks with it. Um, the cool thing is with these, you can definitely tell by the sound if you're hitting little short stubbly hairs or if you're hitting longer beard hair. Uh, if you hit that longer beard hair, you'll know by the sound of it and you know, okay, back away from that because you don't want to start cutting in to where you're trying to, especially on your cheeks, um, you don't want to get it to where they're either uneven or they're too low because that starts to look funky. Um, and yeah, I, actually you can see on mine, I've decided I want to start bringing this line up a little bit higher. Um, I let it go a little bit low after a couple of trims. So I'm going to start incorporating the beard a little higher. So I've got, I'm just letting it go. Now I might, I might go away from that only because it's going to take six months or so to get this line a little bit higher and really, really soon there's going to be hairs here that are an inch long. And the rest of this is three, four inches long. So I'm going to try to do it, but in all likelihood, I'm going to give up on that because it's going to look really funny, um, really funny. So um, now let's see, we've talked about a few things here. Uh, grooming tools as far as, you know, for, for combing and straightening your beard or, or brushing it out after you've showered. Um, I never go to beard. I never go to bed with my beard wet. Never, ever do that. Number one, um, it's like sleeping with wet hair. It's just uncomfortable. It's gross. It's, it's not fun. Number two, it's going to make it a monster to keep that thing groomed and groom it in the morning because, um, you're, it's, you know, wet hair dried is just, it's a tangled mess. It's just, so groom it as best you can before bed. Now, Drying wise, I've tried a few different things. 
Um, I've done just the straight blow dryer, you know, just blow drying it. I, I found that for me, go, blow drying it up and then combing it down and then coming down like this. And that works pretty well. As it got longer, I started incorporating a round brush. And what I was doing with the round brush would be, I would be blow drying down. And then down here at the bottom, what I was doing mistakenly, I was kind of doing this. I was rotating the hair outwards and not knowing how heat and hair and all that react. I was basically setting into place the hairs to curl outward. And I kept trying to then use product to correct it. Um, and then I realized, you know, light bulb went off in my head that, hey, you know, if I, if I start from the bottom and cur and basically pull and turn and roll the hair under the chin and hit it with the high heat, it would lock in place, you know, basically straighter or kind of going down under the chin line. And then as the day kind of went on and the hair relaxed, it would relax in a straighter position. And so it actually looked better as I went through the day versus wanting to kind of turn up and out. And <laughs> so it's just one of those things where I just didn't know. So I learned, I learned uh, trial by error, trial and error, and I figured it out. Uh, so again, yeah, you know, blow down and then roll your roller up and let it sit, lock in, and then just kind of comb it out and then just, you know, comb it out, put in your product. So that was that. And all this time, my wife is watching me kind of do this with the hair dryer and, and all this stuff. And all this time she has in the house, this thing. And she goes, hey, you know, you should try this because you look like you're struggling. Now it's pink, but I don't care. It's pretty awesome. So she's got this thing. And uh, what's this thing called? A Callista. <laughs> but it's basically, it's a round brush that blows hot air through it. So it combines your round brush and your blow dryer into one. And what's awesome also, small thing, but it, it makes a big deal is the cord rotates. So yeah, you just set this thing, I go on high heat and then uh, I go on high setting on the fan and I back it down as my hair dries. But I just kind of go through and I roll let it sit and I just kind of work it around. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. It, you know, it really is. I love this thing. Um, I actually told my wife I'm going to keep it and she needs to get her own. But I said, if she gets me one, get me like one in blue or something, but I don't mind it just because it does a fabulous job. It dries the beard out, um, after a shower, 30, 45 seconds. And I might go a little bit longer just to kind of let the, let the heat set the hair in place. But uh, yeah, something like this, um, for all you ladies, you have actually some pretty cool tools that cross over into man land. So um, yeah, something like this works out real well. Um, and then the other thing I've experimented with and it's worked out pretty well, and I still use it occasionally, is a straightener, a beard straightener. And the way this works is you just plug it in, you turn it on, you set it to your heat setting, whatever it is, 300, 350, 400. And then these ceramic teeth, um, they get they get warm, not out here, but down at the base of the teeth, they get pretty warm. And you just would brush it through your hair very slowly, you know. And again, you're just using the heat to set the hair into, you know, in, th in this case, straight, very straight. So if you're going for that, if you want that straight, pulled straight look, one of these is the way to go. Um, I actually used this this morning for the first time in a couple weeks. Um, I got up to, go, you know, we went out this morning and I woke up, my beard was already in pretty good shape, but it was, it just needed a little help. And, um, I, I just brushed it out, ran the, ran the straightener through it just real quick, put a little product in it. I was good to go. So a straightener is a great, great tool, especially if you have, um, you know, a very curly beard and you want that straight look every now and then. Um, my beard is naturally kind of a wiry, wavy, um, look to it. And like, like I said, I used the straightener this morning and I've even got a little mustache action going on. I've been letting that go. The wife hates it, but I don't know. I'm kind of digging it. So I'm, I'm playing with that. Um, but like I said, I strained it this morning and it's held up. Okay. So, 
Um, I guess the last thing is just a couple other products, really. Um, some type of a moisturizer. It's like leave-in conditioner moisturizer type of thing. Um, I'll use this most mornings before grooming, especially because this one is, um, it helps protect the hair from heat because if you're using a hair dryer or straightener, uh, anything like that, you want to protect the hair so you don't dry it out. So I'll put this on before I do that. Um, that way it's moisturizing the hair, but it's also adding that protection to the hair so you're not damaging it. Um, because you definitely don't want to do months and months and months of hair growth and then you're just damaging it. Because then what happens is, and I've, I've experienced this early on, um, when it finally started to get long enough and I started applying heat to it, is you do damage the hairs and they can actually, they, they break. Like they'll break halfway and snap off. And it, it's, it's discouraging because you're like, damn. And you look at like the little piece of hair you broke off and it might be a half inch long and you're saying, that's a month worth of hair or a month and a half worth of hair growth. And yeah, okay, so I need to, I have to figure out a way to dial this back because I don't want to be doing that all over my face. Um, so some type of a, of a uh, moisturizer, heat protector, something like that. So that goes a long way. And then finally, I would say is just your product. Um, something that's going to help it hold its shape throughout the day. Um, this is, I found for me personally, I've tried a few different things. Um, and... They just, uh, they weren't very good. Not, not, not good. They didn't perform as I felt they should um, for what I was going for. Like I said, I have a pretty wavy beard and I like a little bit more straightness to it. A little bit more structure, if you will. Um, so what I found is you have anywhere from just like your beard balm. That would be like your very basic, not a lot of hold. It just kind of helps keep things kind of in shape. And then you have waxes, um, you know, mustache wax, which is, that is like concrete. Your mustache, like you see the guys with those really crazy, I mean, that stuff, it's, it's Aquanet for mustaches. Um, I discovered there's actually um, beard wax and it looks like this. And again, a uh, little goes a long way. And you can see, you know, it's, it almost has a clay-like consistency and look to it. And, you know, they, these have different scents, of course, all that, you know, you can pick out what you like. Um, but a little goes a long way. I use probably twice as much as, as this. And, you know, once you rub it in, it kind of has a, kind of has a little bit of a chalky white, sticky consistency to it and that's the wax and this wax especially you want to get good and hot and then i like to just kind of lay it into the hair and then kind of go up through it once or twice but mostly for me i'm going down i want it to be pushing down and i want it to clump with the hairs around it and all go downward um I, if i push it up too much then the beard kind of wants to just kind of do that so i want to put i go in and come down with it and then once I've done that and gotten it in and worked in, then I come back with my brush. And then I just kind of give it a light just to kind of comb it through, start kind of setting the hairs in place where I want them. Um, and then just, you know, especially behind the jaw, I like to make sure that the hair's there, kind of pushed in and down. And then that, for me, that just makes it to where you got a nice, clean, sharp jawline. And you don't have the wild hairs kind of coming back and out. So that's just what I find works for me. Then I'll put a little bit in my mustache and work it in. And, you know, it's it, the mustache. It's a, it's kind of an accident. I didn't really try to grow a mustache like this. It just kind of happened. Um, like one day I just noticed all of a sudden it was kind of standing out from the rest of the beard. Um, very unintentional, but happy accident, I guess. Um, so that's really it. Um, you know, like I said, less is more with this, um, especially when you're styling and stuff as well. Don't get frustrated because you're going to have those days where no matter what you do, no matter how much crap you cake in your beard, it's not going to do what you want it to do. And it'll actually look worse as the day goes. It's, it's just weird the way it does it, but it just, the more you try to force it, 
the more it's going to undo itself and it's just going to look like hell for the rest of the day. And you're going to spend all day going, ah, I just left it alone. It looked better in the morning. So take that advice. Um, you know, you'll know right away. You'll learn. You're going to wake up, you're going to do your thing and you're going to look in the mirror and go, Hmm. Okay. It's going to be a pretty good beard day. I don't have to do much. Like I said, you could just, you know, uh, run a straightener through it real quick. You might get, a, you might be real lucky and all you got to do is just kind of run a round brush through it. Just kind of give it a quick, you know, just clean it up a little bit, throw a little product in it and walk away and you're good. And that's it. Um, it might need a little bit more than, you know, more love than that, depending if you shower in the morning or at night. Um, but like I said, you'll have good days and you're going to have days where you struggle and the days where you struggle, just quickly do as best you can and walk away. Otherwise you're just going to make yourself crazy. And like I said, you're going to end up with a beard that looks just really bad. It's going to be caked with crap. It's going to not look good. And it, you know, if you have an itch on your face and you touch it, you're going to make a dent in it because there's so much crap in it. The idea is you want it to be, you want it to hold, but you want it to be soft. You want it to be, uh, you know, you want to be able to kind of run your fingers through it if you need to. Um, and then you can kind of push it back into place. You don't want it to be um, just hard and crusty and all that. So that would be my advice. Um, so that's basically it. Like I said, I, I didn't specify which products, um, companies or anything like that, just because I'm not into pushing one thing over another. Just try stuff, see what works. None of it's crazy expensive. I mean, everything can be had on Amazon these days. Um, some of these products, I, I just, when my wife was out, I said, Hey, if you're going to Ulta or whatever, see if they have some beard stuff. Shockingly, they do. Ulta Beauty has men's beard products. Um, so she just grabbed a couple things for me to try here and there. Um, yeah. And like any, like, you know, hair straightener like this got it from Amazon, 30 bucks. Works great. Um, I have no idea how much this thing is. Considering it's marketed to women, I'm going to guess it's at least a hundred bucks. It just has to be because it's pink. It's for women. It's always more expensive. So anyway, um, do you need all these things? No, but like the general products, the, the, the hair care, the, the, the stuff that's going to help it hold it, that definitely helps, especially if you're going for a look. Um, but like I said, maybe some of this stuff will help you kind of narrow down what you want or need. So you're not spending an extra 50 or hundred bucks. You can just kind of pinpoint products, grab them, and then just utilize them in a helpful and meaningful way. So I've realized now I've rambled for probably 20 or 25 minutes. So I'm going to wrap it up. So like I said, in conclusion, um, the weird phase, you can groom your way through it. That's not a big deal. Uh, don't over groom your beard. Don't, don't go crazy with it. Don't overwash it. That's another one. Only wash it once every few days. If you sweat a lot at the gym or whatever, every other day, and then just replenish it with, uh, you know, your moisturizers, your balms, things like that. And then as far as your products and stuff go, less is more. That's it. Less is more. The less time is better for it. Um, it's, you know, what, it, like I said, if whatever, if whatever you put into the first minute or so of grooming in the morning, that's about all you're going to get out of it. So just throw a good quality minute of grooming straight, you know, comb it out, whatever. That's about what you're going to get for the day. Just be happy with it. Move on. And, uh, that's it. So if you have any comments, questions, things like that, uh, please feel free to put them in the comment section. I'll get to them as best I can. Um, I know this is a little bit longer than I probably intended to go, but there's kind of a lot to cover. Um, Especially since, you know, everyone, everyone has an idea in their head or a, they have this uh, idealized um, vision of what their beard could be or should be. Um, and you probably can get there. That's the thing is, uh, like I said, I, I wasn't sure what would happen once I started letting it really go. Um, you know, and I was pleasantly surprised because, you know, when I was in my early 20s, you know, if I tried to grow a beard, I, you know, there'd be weird patches and things like that. But... Um, as I've learned, um, you know, your beard, your hair, it, it's one thing when you're in your twenties, it's another thing when you're in your forties and it'll be something else when you're in your sixties. So I guess experiment, it, it's good. I mean, it, it's fun to change things up, try things out, see what you like. Um, you know, I really like the beard. My wife likes the beard a lot. Um, 
And since I put so much time into growing it, I, it would, I would have a hard time at this point just shaving it off because I've devoted a good seven months to growing it, going through the motions, going through the processes of learning what works and what doesn't. Um, and now I've become pretty good at quickly grooming it in the morning to a very acceptable place where I'm happy with it. So it, it would be tough to get rid of. So I'm definitely going to hold on to it for a while. Um, I may even let it go a little bit longer. Just try it out. Um, and that's the other thing is as it gets length, it, you know, gravity just kind of helps pull things down. So, you know, your beard might want to do crazy things when it's shorter, but as you get some length to it, it actually gravity and weight, they do their job. So they, they help out. So you can do it. You can get through it. Um, just be patient with it. Stay on top of things um, and you'll get there. So if you have any comments, questions, shoot them down below. And uh, yeah, that's it. We'll talk to you guys later.